So, we think about the inverse of anything in arithmetic. Say you take the addition. What's the inverse of addition? Subtraction. It's pretty easy to, to think about that. Essentially, what we're doing is we are undoing an undo operation. So if you have an operation of addition and you subtract away the same thing that you added, you undo. So say we had A and we added a value B to it, we got A plus B, and then we took away the B, we essentially get back A. Yeah? So A plus B minus B equals A. Similarly, if you think about multiplication and division, if you have A times B, what do you have to do to get out A so that you undo again whatever it is that B did, multiplying by B did. Surely dividing by B yeah, would take away. So multiplication and division are inverse operations. Addition and subtraction are inverse operations. But when our operation is more complicated, it's a function, it's a relationship. So we're now looking for the inverse of a function and that's an interesting concept not all functions have inverses a certain type of function has an inverse and that's called a one is to one function so they have inverses What does that mean? What is one is to one function? The one is to one function satisfies something called the horizontal line test. Okay, so let's draw a function and see if it passes the horizontal line test. So I'm going to draw, say, y equals x squared, which is a parabola. It passes through 0, 0, the origin. Yeah, that's my y-axis, that's the x-axis, that's the function, y equals x squared. Okay. So, if I now draw a horizontal line, in how many places does this horizontal line cut the function? It cuts it in two places, one at x1 and again x2. So we have two values, x1 and x2, in the domain that give the same y value, okay? So this is the value y, and therefore this fails, this function fails the horizontal line test. Okay, so this function will not have an inverse. Let's look at a different kind of function. So again, I have my axes, and say I make a function like this, just a straight line, okay? So it has the general equation of y equals mx plus c, okay? Where m is the slope, c is the intercept, okay? And again, these are my axes, y and x, that's the origin. Okay, now a function like this, if I take any horizontal line through it, anywhere, here, cuts it at most at one point, here, cuts it at most at one point, and so on. So this does satisfy the horizontal line test. This is a one is to one function. Okay, and this will then have an inverse. Okay, so what does that mean? Okay, let us plot a function, a given function, and its inverse. Okay, so I'm going to choose the function f of x equals 9 minus x squared. Okay, and in the range x varies from 0 to 3. 
Okay. So let's input some values here to plot it. Okay. X, this is f of x, same as y. Okay. And let's take some values. Let's plug in some values. So if I take x as 0, f of x becomes just 9. If x is 1, that's 1 squared taken away, so that gives us 8. If x is 2, that's 4 taken away, that gives 5. If x is 3, we get 0. Okay, so we've now got some points on our... Okay, and I've got 0, 0 here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I'll just mark a few points. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 9. That's the x value. And say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That's good. And let's go along the y axis. 3, 6. Okay. So the points that we had. Are right here okay and I am going to plot the function f of x so we have the point 0 9 right there 1 8 there 2 5 right there 3 0 that's as much as we have of our function f of x okay what about the inverse function? If we draw the inverse function, we have 9, 0, so we have a point here, 8, 1, 5, 2, and 0, 3. So our function now, this is our inverse function. Okay? Look, there's a similarity of shape, right? And that's because this function graphically is actually just reflected in this line y equals x. So for any function its inverse is reflected in the line y equals x. Okay, thank you. This algebraically. So again a function f of x, which I'm going to just call y, equals 9 minus x squared. Okay, in the range x varies from 0 to 3. To obtain its inverse algebraically, what you do is you try to express this as x equals something. So you want x on the left hand side alone. So you get y minus 9 equals minus x squared. And I'm just going to change get this rid of the sign by doing that hopefully everybody's with me which means that x squared equals 9 minus y or x is equal to square root of 9 minus y yeah plus minus and then because we like to express the domain as the x values in mathematics we're going to just flip the x and y to write y equals 9 minus x. And this is our equation for f inverse x. This is our inverse function. Okay? So we have now obtained our inverse function.